Mojo series, a series of webinars where we talk to some of the leading experts in small businesses and brand builders from all across India. And we have a conversation about how they have gone about building their business. Today, I'm really excited because uh, I am actually getting to talk to someone who has grown a brand which uh, I have followed for so long. I have been a very happy customer of Printo. And we have Manish Sharma with us, who's been the CEO and a co-founder of Printo. And he's built Printo uh, uh, from the scratch. And it's now a very good brand spanning across cities. And today we have Manish with us to discuss how packaging plays a role in building a successful DTC brand. Uh, welcome Manish to Mojo Series. It's a pleasure to have you here. So. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, your journey with uh, Printo your, uh, and how you went about uh, building a brand. Hey, thanks, Keval, and thanks, InstaMojo, for putting this together. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, let me talk a bit about, uh, yeah, thanks for asking how Printo started off. And, uh, yeah, Printo actually started off with a brand journey in, on its own. Uh, I remember... Uh, walking around the streets of Bombay. I'm, I'm from Bombay, where it was called Bombay then, and uh, looking for a business card for myself because I'd come back to India and I was networking and trying to, uh, uh, and I thought it would be nice to have a name um, in a certain font, looked a certain way uh, with a, with my number and my email ID, right? And uh, so I could hand it over to people. And I was looking for all sorts of opportunities. I was looking for a job. So I was meeting all sorts of folks. I was looking to talk to others about business ideas. I was wondering what to do next, you know. And uh, it was important that I put my name out there in a certain way that I had conceived it, right? In a certain font that I wanted it to be in. And uh, and that's when I started going around to get a, uh, a business card printed. It so happened I had such a poor experience uh, that I started wondering uh, maybe there's an opportunity here. Right? Maybe this is a business uh, worth exploring uh, maybe there are others like me and so on the uh, i started investigating and the journey of uh, printo had its seeds in that in me trying to brand myself on a business card and uh, moved on and finally we opened our first store in um, good old bangalore in koramangla yeah, uh, 16 15 years ago right? so uh, it, it, that's the that's the start of uh, the journey and the whole vision was to make it incredibly simple for individuals and businesses, and especially smaller growing businesses, um, to to print and create brand merchandise, right? Uh, initially on paper, and now on uh, all different sorts of things. So yeah, that's a bit about the printo, uh, yeah, printo background. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think when you say like you know packaging for uh, small businesses and how it's important, I think there's this place in Bangalore called Chart Street. And uh, I, I order food from there just for their packaging because it's so colorful and vibrant and it, it just draws you towards that particular brand, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, Manish, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what exactly makes a brand and how would one, how should one go about it? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I like to break down things to be very simple, right? You know, yes. And I think a lot of uh, folks on this call hopefully are uh, are entrepreneurs uh, themselves. So uh, I would see brand as two or three elements. Right? The look, so let's take a shop. Let's think of a shop because it's easy for me to visualize the shop and it's easy for me to describe what I did. So let's take the printer shop, right? Uh, I know what a printer shop looks like and it should consistently look like that. So if you pass by a printer store, even without reading the logo completely registering, you should know there's a printer shop. Right? And that happens with us with many brands. Right? So the look is important. Yeah? Uh, when you walk into the store, the experience is important. So there are various uh, you know, moments of truth as we see in a, when a customer engages with a product. Right? So, yeah, so walking into a store, looking at the store is one moment of truth. Walking into a store is another moment of truth. Being met by somebody and greeted by somebody is another moment of truth. And finally, uh, getting the product of a certain quality and a certain standard that you expect. 
and we're not getting into whether it's great standard or great quality but what you expect that's the important piece is what all comes in and makes a brand right so uh yeah so i'll repeat that it's it's what you expect when you see it what you actually experience when you're buying it and what you finally experience when you've received it right? all these three things simply make a brand right so uh, yeah let's take another example uh, out of uh, food since you know it's a favorite uh, favorite topic so uh, what's uh, yeah, what's another popular brand for you uh, keval uh in the food segment yes uh i would say i really like how uh, ccd packages stuff okay Some, like i i because i think the connect there is that since it's a brand that like one of the most it's been one of the most popular coffee brands ever since we were growing yeah. up right yeah so for us that connect is always there you look at like a ccd glass or a cup and you know it's safe it's it's yeah. a taste that you have experienced so yeah i would say ccd yeah. so fantastic you use some words that we know we've grown up with this and we seen it everywhere and you used another word safe let's just take two two of these right and uh, if if cafe coffee day had even double the number of cafes but they all looked a little different right mm. uh cafe coffee day written differently right? and uh, and there was a time in the early days when they were experimenting with logos so okay. looked a little different right but uh a, if they look very different we would never have that association of repeatability right yes. so repeatability is so important and it registers um, subliminally in our background you know uh, saying that so first principle is get that repeatability out there right whenever you teach uh, deal with a customer in a retail business it might be a board but it needs to look the same right uh, if you have only one shop that's also perfect but it everything that you do needs to have some connected pattern could be a color could be a font could be a type of language the way we speak yes right? so you got that and then you said safety now now safety really i'm i'm hazarding a guess that you're not a safety food safety expert yes and neither am i and neither are most of our, our customers who are consuming it but it is important to know that a company which actually keeps this consistent is capable of providing safety you know what i mean right yes. so uh, because safety needs consistency so if you're in the safety business even in the food business for example i i would lay massive stress on consistency not only for your brand but also to send the message that you're a company with believes in processes and uh, you would have taken care of basic things in food yeah so that's thanks for bringing out that example that's a good example um uh, for a brand that we could uh, you know a kind of uh, a analyze right um a, i could i could jump on to some of the you know other elements of branding but uh, what would be nice is if uh, the audience today uh, it starts uh, putting in questions that they'd like to see addressed in this session we're going to talking about we're going to talk about packaging So you talk about brand experiences in general and what makes a, a brand experience. Uh, so, if you put out messages, it will help Kevil and me navigate the conversation uh, much better. Kevil, did you have another question? Yeah. Uh, we have one uh, comment from uh, one of the viewers saying, uh, "Slay coffee totally slays the packaging." I think coffee seems to be like a good segment to take examples yeah. from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah, because uh, you know, I'm a coffee lover, and um, I'm a third wave uh, fan, right? And uh, and everything about third wave. Now, here's a great point. Every cafe of third wave is different, right? Its okay. interiors are different. At the same time, it's the same, right? So they've been able to keep some of the brand elements so consistent, right? at the same time wrap up uniqueness if you have a lot of consistency you also have freedom for play in saying that hey can i do different lanterns and different benches instead of just simple uh, sofa uh, yeah, sofa seats and can i have wooden unpolished tables rough finish instead of the regular formica table right you can play a lot but look at everything else that they do consistently right and uh, that when i order a pack of beans at home it's packed in a certain way all the time with a certain logo and a certain 
um, yeah, a certain way of presenting what the coffee is all about, which talks about the brand. Again, none of us are talking about whether it's uh, it's good or bad, whether you agree or disagree, but it's uh, yeah, but it's done a certain way. In fact, some of the biggest brands in the world you may hate, right? There might be personalities you may not like, but if you had to list out 20 things about a politician X or a politician Y whom you dislike, you will consistently see that there are certain things which always stick out. And that yes. builds personalities and that builds uh, uh, yeah, builds brands. So uh, yeah, uh, for uh, in the in the political world, it's called polarization. Yes. In uh, in the marketing world, it's actually simply called branding. Uh, yes. So it's important uh, to pick out some key aspects and uh, highlight those aspects about the brand and do that consistently to speak the same tone of voice uh, yeah, consistently. Yeah. Why don't I show you some, uh, you know, some samples of branding, right? Like, sure, uh, sure. You know, you could have ordered something if you were a D2C business and uh, a, something selling directly to consumers, right? Uh, you could uh, simply package something in a box like this, right? Okay. Uh, and you say, okay, you know, it's tackily taped out here, simple box, right? Um, craft paper box that comes in out here, different types, right? And, but it takes so little to make this box slightly better, right? What could we do? The simplest, cheapest thing you could do is saying, is there putting tape out here? Uh, I've got a sticker sheet. Got it. Send out a sticker sheet for the brand. I take off a sticker. Right. This is a plain, uh, yeah, plain sticker. I just get this off here and uh, maybe just put it on one edge. Okay, let me see if I get this right. I'm pretty bad at uh, aligning things. Uh, it's not useful if you're in the printing business. But uh, yeah, I've, suddenly this plain box has come alive. It's got some elements. I could have put yes. another sticker out here as well. Right. And uh, it says sometimes people get into very complicated things about when discussing how to build a brand. But, you know, you can start off with just your logo on the box. And uh, you welcome when, it, when it's being handed over to a customer. A simple thing in a store could be that uh, in a cafe, perhaps, if you're giving a box, a cake, a slice of cake or something, turn it around with a the brand there whenever you're handing it over to the customer. Right? Small, small thing, but put your brand first out there. Um, you could have yet had a thing and done something else besides this. You could have printed out a simple uh, sleeve, what we call a sleeve out here. It's a simple sleeve. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. And just you can see this in some of the food packages. Yes. Make a plain box, fairly ugly looking plain box, if I say, uh, much more attractive by putting a sleeve. Right? And, uh, you know, I'm going to say this more than once uh, during this call. What's really interesting is you don't need to go and print uh, hundreds of these. Uh, I think it's uh, it's no longer the time when you think that when my business grows, I'll invest in this. You don't need to because you can walk into uh, a print store. I hope it's print store. <laughs> but you could go to literally any print store and get these sleeves. Right? You can go into uh, printer or in order this online, right? And I'm sure there are other sites who do this as well. But what I'm trying to say is that this costs uh, as little as maybe you know a couple of bucks or three bucks or four bucks, right? but depending on the size of the box, to uh, to really lift up your entire box. Uh, suppose this was you uh, the one. Uh, suppose this was a more expensive product, right? Suppose you were in the business of, uh, yeah, let's say, just you know, custom uh, custom beads or custom jewelry, right? and it was three four thousand rupees per pack. What you could do uh, with a lot of those is use a custom uh, gift wrap. Right? If you don't know what your box is, or the box is coming from outside somewhere, right, where you uh, you want to wrap it up, so you could just use a custom gift wrap. Let me show you an example of a custom gift wrap. This is an example of a custom gift wrap. Uh, it could have your logo. This has a print or logo in a different element, right? Okay. Uh, but you could put your logo. You could put any design. You could go ahead and even personalize this with the customer's name, right? 
and you suddenly yeah so this could be another design you know it's a simple gift wrap and uh, it could come in large sizes like you know as, as large as uh, you know uh, a meter wide or even five feet wide if you like to and uh, you could simply gift wrap this you know there's a box and put it out do it with your hand fold it and make it a much more presentable product and imagine getting a gift wrap with your customer's name on it uh, if you're in the jewelry business or if you're in a high value business it adds immense value what is the cost of a gift wrap it could be as little as 20 rupees right so personalized right now remember you don't need to buy a thousand of those so you don't have to spend 20000 rupees right is not what i'm saying right uh you can just start with one right? you can start with five you can start with 10 right? so it just if it's a 3500 rupee product adding 20 rupees just enhances the to your cost enhances the whole experience right that's another um, example of uh, of packaging when you're giving something out uh, i intend to cover a bit of packaging right uh, a little more than this maybe a, a few more samples but what will help direct me is uh, if there are certain questions that already start coming yes out. yes we we do have questions actually we have a very i think the most obvious question which a businesses have is about uh, the budgeting for uh, packaging right so we have a question from hiba saying how much of marketing budget should be should a business allocate to packaging yeah yeah, that's a yeah, yeah that's a great question and uh, i think why it's a great question is because we don't uh, we don't even budget packaging in first in our cost right and packaging is a big cost yeah uh, so we need to start with recognizing that that it's part of our our product cost um so a quick one about product costing i think the way to anyways do a uh, product costing for most of us in the consumer business is excuse me is to start uh, with a process called target costing the uh, normal costing used to be that it costs me uh, uh, five rupees to make this pen. You know, it cost me another uh, three rupees to sell it. Uh, I want to add another profit of uh, three rupees. So I'm going to sell this pen for eleven rupees. Right. Uh, so it's a cost plus model. Right. You say how much, how much did it cost you, and then you add on something on top of it. Right. Um, and it's a very bad model to do costing. It works well when it gets high commodity. Right? So when you say, I want to price, uh, how much do I sell uh, you know, wheat for? Or how much do I sell uh, grains for staples? How much do I sell oil for, uh, plastic for? There, everybody's input costs are known. It's a commodity. Everybody's selling the same thing. Uh, you just want to say, how much does it cost me? How much margin can I mark up? And they go to the market. But for most of us in the brand business, we are all talking about really what is the value we're adding and do minus you reduce the value so it's a value minus model that you talk about so okay. the question to ask what is the maximum price that the maximum number of customers can pay for this product yeah okay? i'll repeat that what's the maximum price that the maximum number of customers can pay for this product now there will be huge number of prices so there must be this product if you sell it at uh, 15 rupees maybe you have 1000 customers i'm taking a sample uh, let's take a product say how many customers will i find if i sell this at 15 rupees perhaps a thousand right? uh, mm -hmm. look around in your uh, you want to start somewhere look around in your apartment complex how many people in my apartment complex will buy this product what if i price this at 35 okay uh, we say okay uh, price is 35 maybe there will be uh, about 400 people who will buy this okay, so you got 1000 at 15 rupees 400 at 35 okay, if i price this at 200 rupees how many will buy uh, maybe there will be five fools who will buy it okay sure got it but now uh, once you've got that you say okay where do i make my maximum money and you say 400 people buying at 35 rupees is giving me roughly a 1400 rupee 14000 rupee uh, revenue right do i want to play that or do i want to go and sell it to 1000 people at 15 rupees that gives me 15000 rupees uh, but from a profit point of view i make much more money in the middle right so let me go after that right and the third scenario where only five people will buy a 1000 rupee pen is this not worth my while because you know, just just for five thousand rupees, I don't want to get into this business. Right? So, 
think uh, value minus, which means target costing. Once you've said, okay, I've got this, this is the price that somebody will pay for this product. Then get to the costing table. No point in the costing table after that. Then say, okay, I need to make a 50% gross margin on this. And uh, how you make the gross margin, uh, Matt, depends on uh, how you're going to distribute and sell this. Right? So if you're going to distribute uh, yeah, yeah, typically in your own store, if you have your own store, you want a 60% gross margin. Right? So as simple as that, keep a six, 50 to 60% gross margin. So if your product is selling for 100 rupees, see to it, how can you manufacture it in 40 rupees? Okay. Got it. Rupees is the selling price. Remove 60 rupees. That's your margin. Figure out how to get this made in 40 rupees. Include packaging price there. Okay. Now, Hiba, to answer a specific question, how much budget should you allocate? Depends on who your customer is. How much value do you expect packaging to provide? If I'm selling this pen for uh, 15 rupees, yeah. I'm and to thousand people, I'm expecting them to use this like uh, uh, something very commoditized, very regular. I don't want to spend too much on packaging. I only want packaging to see to it the pen does not get scratched. Okay. That's it. So I'm going to go and find the cheapest protective packaging I can find. Right? Maybe a seal king, uh, a, a self sealing pouch. That's it. A transparent self sealing pouch. Now, if I'm trying to sell it for 35 rupees, there's much more value I'm attaching to it. I would go out and spend at least two to three rupees on each of these packages. Right? And of course, if I've got people who I'm trying to sell it for, uh, uh, you know, a thousand rupees to, right? Taking an extreme case just to drive the point more than anything else, I'm going to have something with a tag attached to it. Maybe there's something like a tag, right? Which will talk about how fancy my product is, the tag will be attached to this pen right? uh, and this pen will come along with this tag on saying what, what are the features and benefits of uh, why this pen is so cool. Why is it a thousand rupee pen, right? So you talk about the grip, the rubber used out there, uh, how smooth the tip is to write with and how long it can last, right? All those things will be reinforced. Your brand qualities will be reinforced in your package. Okay? In which case, I would go out and allocate maybe 50 rupees to package it. Got it. Or, uh, because I'm making loads of profit. Is it yet costing me 15, uh, 11 rupees to make? And I'm selling it a thousand bucks. So the people who are buying it are buying it for something beyond just this. They might be buying it because it's Hiva's pen, right? And it comes into this fancy package stuff. Think about the T-shirts we wear, the jerseys we wear for Man United or for you know uh, our local IPL teams. Right? Uh, they don't cost too much to make. Nobody's paying for that. So, but uh, they sell much higher, and hence the packaging that they come in with when you walk out of a Man U store, fancy bag, fancy everything. Perhaps something like a name bag. Let me show. Uh, if I'm going to sell this product for a thousand bucks, I might. Might as well put it in a bag like this. And again, you don't need to print too many. You can print one of these bags at Printo, right? So just to drive home the point of cost of packaging. But happy to take a follow-on question there. So cost of packaging, definitely raw material cost, put it in. But think about it as uh, from the whole value minus philosophy of how does it help you either protect the product or get more value out of the product. Yeah, I think uh, it's a very uh, interesting approach, uh, like the minus approach. And uh, this also, like recently, if I'm not uh, wrong, a couple of years back, uh, there was this order which was passed by the consumer court that uh, companies cannot charge for uh, uh, plastic bags if they have their branding on it because it has its own value. So I think that was an interesting uh, approach to, you know, calculating it that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have we have a good uh, great question from Harsha which which asks uh, which is more important uh, primary or secondary packaging in an e-commerce DTC brand and I actually personally don't know the difference between primary or secondary so if you could explain uh, that as well you know I think uh, what Harsha would say is that you know so there's a primary packaging which is the outside packaging right and secondary packaging with the protecting protective packaging 
right? Uh, Harsha, is my understanding correctly when you use primary and secondary? Uh, so just uh, put a note on the uh, chat if that's what you, uh, just put a thumbs up if that's what you understand, right? And uh, I think it's, uh, I think both of them are extremely important, right? Uh, but let's let's remember that uh, packaging is a cost, right? So uh, I'll tell you primary packaging gives me a big advantage in a couple of things, right? Uh, a, let's look at this printo, printo box, okay? It's an external, uh, external box, but whenever it's shipped out, it's carrying the printo brand, right? Of course, you're seeing it the other way around, it's mirrored, uh, but you're carrying the printo brand everywhere it goes, right? So there's huge benefit uh, beyond the fact that it's protecting the outer cover, right? So I think when, you, when you're looking at packaging, I would first look at how much of it this is for protection, right? Get that out of the way because you cannot have a poorly protected product delivered, right? And look at it from that lens. Once you go beyond protection, once you've sorted that, and that should be the primary uh, primary consideration, right? Uh, uh, for most of the products delivered to home. And some products may not need it, like this pen may not need it, but you yet need some protection uh, coming out there. Beyond that, you definitely have to say, hey, okay, is this product going to be removed and kept in its secondary packaging at home? Okay. Or is it going to be, uh, so in which case, I will spend a bit on the primary packaging, you know, but if you look at, uh, uh, yeah, let's look at classic, classic stuff that we get. When we get, let's, let's take coffee again. Uh, when I get coffee, I always get this delivered from, uh, if I swiggy in coffee from third wave, uh, beans, I get this delivered in a bag. That's the yeah, outer packaging, which I don't care about, right? But the inner is very important and it's going to be on my shelf for a very long time. So folks who come to my house and when I make coffee and they're standing by me with, along with me in the kitchen, they see the third wave branding out there. So think about how your product is going to be used, right? If it's just disposable, right? And they're going to discard the packaging and throw it out, it's different, right? But I would suggest that if you can make that primary packaging reusable, right? Uh, or even the secondary, great way to go, right? If you can't make it reusable, reusable means before the customer for something else. Yeah. Uh, that's a great way to think about it, right? And uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's how I look at this rather than only from a technical point of view. Uh, remove safety, then think about use cases of how your customer and consumer will be working with this package. I'll give you an example, uh, one final example on that. Uh, this is one of our big clients uh, and we do packaging for them for their, uh, for their work from home kits, right? Now, uh, if I look at this kit, right? it's got some commodity stuff in it, right? Uh, but I know for sure that this box is going to be reused. Okay, it's a pretty solid box, right? So it, it uh, so it protects from the outside, but it actually is going to be reused significantly by anybody out there, right? So think through those use cases, and uh, yeah, and you know this is a known brand, but imagine when I'm trying to build a brand, right? And to your point, uh, there was a time when. Uh, I used, to, I used to see a lot of uh, Printo bags, polythene bags. They had a distinct look, uh, which of course, if you're, a, you know, if, you're, uh, if you're working at Printo, you'll always spot it. And sometimes you see it from the corner of your eye, different places, people carrying it. Uh, and I'm sure that would happen with many other brands, but those days are gone for good reason, uh, because of uh, the ban on plastic. Uh, I had a question and I think uh, it also aligns with another questions we have in chat. So do you think uh, unnecessary packaging is a problem in the industry? And to add to that, we have Rapti's question, uh, which says that how do brand ensure that they don't add to the carbon footprint? For example, on an e-commerce site, a very small product, they send big boxes, which is unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you touch upon a very important point, right? Uh, uh, it's a big hassle, right? The way we do and approach packaging is a is a massive hassle, and uh, I think there are two issues I find out here. One is because all packaging I see is primarily being disposed, 
right? It's not recycled. Uh, having said that, India actually has one of the best recycling mechanisms uh, worldwide. Right? Uh, just because we are poor, so we squeeze out the maximum of any of the waste that we have. Uh, yeah. So we don't have the best recycling processes, but definitely we see that even the smallest piece is sent uh, uh, to recycle. By the way, most of packaging material in India, right, and uh, primarily worldwide, is made from recycled paper. Right? And uh, one of Printo's investors uh, yeah, runs a very large, uh, you know, yeah, paper mill, and uh, yeah, and I get to learn a lot from them on how this is done. So, yeah, in some sense, actually, if you see, as long as it's paper-based packaging, and it's not plastic. It's significantly lower carbon footprint, right? A, because they are either steward uh, yeah, stewardship forest council uh, approved paper, which means these uh, trees are grown meant for a certain place, but mainly because its raw material is, is the raw material used is primarily waste paper, right? Uh, in fact, packaging has gone through the roof. Uh, prices have gone through the roof during COVID uh, because of uh, yeah because of huge demand. Because the, all the containers were stuck, uh, transport was stuck, so waste paper coming in into different countries uh, was restricted, and hence packaging okay. was, uh, went up. So packaging actually, especially when you see stuff like this brown, uh, which uh, uh, we blame a lot of Amazon, uh, uh, you know, products for, I think actually is not as bad as what we see at home when it comes for food packaging, which is foil, right? And that is a problem. Right? Uh, yeah, getting foil cleaned out, plastics cleaned out are big problems out there. Coming to uh, how do you ensure? I think one of the ways to ensure this is to see can you keep your packaging as simple as possible, right? And buy as little as possible in step with your demand, right? Uh, don't go and buy 10,000 boxes just because every box will cost you five rupees each, yeah? Go and spend 50 rupees a box, but just buy um, maybe 20 of them, maybe 50 of them. And as you learn from packaging, go and figure out what is the best thing that's required. Do you need a very strong box overall? Or do you need certain corners that you can get to protect your uh, package? And that's okay. all instead of the whole solid box. Right? So but yeah, uh, there are a bunch of there's an uh, you know institute of packaging uh, yeah based out of Bombay. Uh, you can go out and learn a bunch of things that's available locally, and just thinking through quantities, putting restrictions. Let me not buy large quantities. Uh, itself is a good way to reduce packaging. Got it. Uh, we have a very uh, specific question from uh, this uh, business uh, called Wildberry Organics. They say they are an eco-friendly brand and they use plastic-free, reusable or compostable packaging. So they would like to know a little more about the composition of inks. Yeah, so uh, that's a good question. And uh, I'm going to have a, perhaps if you'll leave yourselves your details, uh, everybody who's attending the webinar and can leave it in, we'll send you more data on inks, right? And what inks can be used. Man. We are very new entrants into the space, right? in using uh, uh, vegetable dyes primarily. Right? And the challenge with vegetable dyes that we're facing is that they need to be done manually. Right? Uh, very few of the production equipment, right? And uh, I'm, I'm right now speaking from uh, Printo's uh, production hub. And uh, we keep trying different types of inks with our production equipment, but very few production equipment will support anything that is even, is even close to eco-friendly. right? And uh, just because the whole supply chain, whether it's toner based or it's uh, yeah, yeah, ink based, uh, is so configured to specific machines and performance and low cost that uh, there's no room uh, to really work out uh, different ways of making this uh, eco-friendly. And you as an eco-friendly brand will understand that because you're competing with some big names who use a lot of synthetic uh, materials and because of which it gets cheaper more consistent right and uh, so i think it's very early stages right and uh, uh, what i'll leave you with is that the best you can do for now is look for eco solventings right 
and water solvent inks. These are two ones, right? So you've got solvent inks, which are right up there, right? So you see uh, in terms of ruggedness to, uh, yeah, to weather, which you see billboards printed on those and you don't want to touch that. Right? That's, that's, uh, we, we, as a policy, don't even have a solvent ink printer uh, all across print or across its uh, six cities. We don't have a single machine that prints in that right? Uh, what we do have is what is known as a latex printer. In fact, one of the equipment uh, uh, to my left is a latex printer. It's a big HP uh, printer where um, it's it's not solvent, but it uses and it's close to eco solvent. So what's known as eco solvent is the eco friendlier inks. Let me be clear: these are yet bad for the environment, right? But they are significantly less uh, bad for the environment, right? And uh, and I I kind of uh, uh, feel a pang of guilt when I say that because I know it's not clean as yet, but at least we've moved, we've got an option of moving to something cleaner and cleaner. Um, and then there are techniques like UV printing, which takes regular inks and kind of, uh, you know, so if you see a product like this, uh, allows those inks to, uh, to basically cooks them in into any surface, right? So uh, when, I, when I talk about inks, I think it's, it's important to also think about the substrate, right? Because, uh, Inks are bad, but uh, do remember that the substrate that you're printing on, uh, when it's recycled or whatever that substrate is, is equally bad. It doesn't seem bad, prima facie, because you say, uh, you know, substrate's the clean thing, but to get it clean is to, uh, it takes a lot of chemicals when the paper is produced. But inks are prima facie out there, so we tend to focus on some of those things out there. Uh, my hope is that over the next uh, five years, and I'm saying five years, you will have many more uh, vegetable ink solutions out here, right? And uh, I hope in the next six months, Printo will be able to put out something out there. All right. Uh, we have a question from uh, Nikhil. Uh, it says, uh, do you keep a track of your competitor's packaging? If yes, do you try and do something similar or different or completely different? Yeah. Um, thanks for asking that. Yeah, and as an entrepreneur, uh, it is a must to keep track of competition, of course. Uh, but it's uh, it's very it's a very good question you ask because uh, uh, we genuinely face this at times. Should I do something like what he or she did, right? Uh, and, uh, yeah, and I uh, I sometimes look at competing brands and sometimes look at some of the packaging that they do for some of the products outstanding, right? Uh, uh, what works uh, for all of us at the end of the day is to find your own truth, right? Because uh, if you don't work from first principles or your own truth, or your own philosophy, you will keep reacting to competition and others and adapting others' philosophy. And uh, when you're building a brand, it needs to have a core philosophy, right? And you can model yourself over certain people, but you have to be your own you, right? Yes. Um, and uh, and that's very important. If you are not, if you don't spend time on your own philosophy, and and if you can't think about it, simply think about what would I like. Just ask your question. If I was the customer, what would I like? Right? Uh, what would I like to see in this packaging? Okay, I would love to see what my competition does. That packaging is what I would really like. Okay, good. Uh, what is different about you as a brand? Right. Write down those two or three things. Find those things to anchor your packaging in. Right. Taking one of uh, inspirations from customers' packaging, no problem at all. But how far will you go with that? Right. You know, you won't. It won't be able to stretch you. Yeah. So sit down. Say. My customer, understand what your customer's journey is. You know, see a brand is, uh, when you're trying to build a brand, it's very much like uh, a human being. A good way to think about a brand is, uh, think of a personality. A friend in school, uh, Smitha. Uh, Smitha was, uh, was tall, she had, uh, yeah, she had uh, uh, glasses, she used to stand first in class, uh, and she was very witty, but she was also very quiet, right? So you have a personality of person, right? Similarly, brands have personalities. Try to think of your brand as a person. Think about that person. What would this brand do? Now, you would never say that I have to, as a person that Smita has to always be like Rohan or like Nina or somebody else, right? Uh, yeah. She's her own personality, right? So uh, yeah, Smita is competitive. She will learn from others. 
and say, okay, I want to be as good in science as that person in class, right? Uh, but they are all individuals and your brand is basically you, right? So track the hell out of the competition uh, only to make it better. But uh, going down, copying the competition is like, uh, is okay if you were copying in school and class, right? To get ahead of that next examination. But in life ke examination, you to have to do something yourself, right? So uh, I think start from those principles. Uh, I have a, a little follow up on this. Uh, what should a business do in a case where the competitions, let's say packaging only in this case, like let's take Apple's example. When they did packaging, it was so loved by the masses that it kind of became a standard. Like today, a lot of these companies, especially in the electronic segment, they do follow Apple's model in some way or the other, right? Yeah. So what do you do in case when your competition's uh, approach is so good that it kind of becomes an industry norm and industry standard? Yeah, yeah. So Ma, I would look at the competition say and really learn from it and say, what does it teach me? It doesn't teach me that the box should look good. That is the proximal answer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It teaches me that... Uh, there's a whole brand experience associated with my product. You know, earlier a laptop would be all about a laptop would be about uh, how much memory, what's your processor speed, screen size, boom, that's it, right? Uh, kitna bada screen hai, memory kitna hai, all these kind of things, right? And that's it, right? All tech specs, right? Today it's a Mac, right? And uh, a Mac did not deal with all this. By the way, you want no specs, it's there on the side of the box, right? Yeah. And that's what Apple taught us. It didn't teach us packaging only. It taught us this. Is a, so that's a, it's a great question because it, it anchors into the previous question, right? And say what I would look at that competition if I was, uh, uh, I was Lenovo, let's say, uh, I would look at that. Or if I was, you know, uh, even uh, uh, LG makes a fantastic thin laptop. But if I was any uh, anyone else, I would look at it and say, uh, what do I learn from it? That this is no longer a hardcore computing device. Right? This is actually an extension of a person's personality. Right? And, uh, and today, if you look at it, none of us buy laptops without some association. Yes. Okay. I remember if you bought your first Mac, if you were a Intel user and moved to Mac. Right? And... Uh, a, and what are you associated with? And then Mac went in and built the journey for you, right? So uh, it is uh, yeah, packaging is just an extension of the brand experience, and the brand experience is is your particular insight into your customer, which is only yours, right? Starbucks insight into its customer is very different from uh, the unique insight is very yes. different from cafe coffee days, which is very different from third ways. But everybody is going there to spend time, meet with their friends and have coffee, right? That is a common insight, right? But there is some specific insight within this space uh, itself, right? It could be that my customers love value for money coffee, uh, but in a certain environment, right? That could be their inside starbucks inside could be very convenient that's why starbucks worldwide are you know located within a few kilometers of each other right that's what ccd tried to do out here right? and uh, third waves insight is that man their, their genuine insight is boss this is at least for me it looks like this is the that a cafe can have great food and a fun place to hang out right uh, so you were literally like a co-working space awesome food you know uh, their food is uh, uh, ranks way above perhaps starbucks and uh, definitely way above starbucks uh, cafe coffee day in my opinion right. all right so uh, you know I've, like for the past few years there's this uh, specific category of content that has been created which is unboxing videos right like yeah. So how do you think, do you think that has given like a boost to the concept of packaging Like brands think more about it because you have like thousands of YouTubers and, you know, Instagrammers actually making a proper video focusing on the unboxing process. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, uh, yeah, uh, the influencers have 
touched upon a very critical moment of truth, right? Which uh, which people don't talk about much, and then this they discovered this, and everybody else it resonated with them. So I don't think that it was just a creation; it was actually somebody highlighting it and it resonating with everyone else. Just like your example of an Apple box, right? Yeah. Apple unboxing experience. Uh, so let's go one more into a moment of truth thing, right? In a brand experience journey, you have a bunch of moments of truth, right? You have a moment of truth. So if you're ordering something online, you have a moment of truth when you discover the name either through a Google ad. What did that Google ad say? There's one moment of truth, right? What were the lines that it mentioned? Did it say cheapest? Did it say cool? Uh, uh, did it have a great image? Uh, what was it? And then the next moment of truth is uh, when you actually order something. How was the interface? How did the product look? Right, those kind of things. If you're if you're a reseller on Amazon, the moment of truth is the quality of your uh, images and the quality of your sharpness of your specifications and the genuineness of your reviews and your uh, responses to those reviews and complaints. Right, those are the moments of truth. And eventually, uh, we realize that a big moment of truth post purchase is when the product gets there. Right, so. Uh, I think if you have a product uh, which has this kind of a, which lasts longer, has an unboxing uh, related to it, go out and do it, right? Do invest in an unboxing and doesn't take much. Uh, 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 one of my favorite chocolates in the US has a unboxing experience where you open the wrapper and there's a poem inside of the wrapper, right? And uh, I've got tons of those chocolates that I have not seen the poem repeated right and I, I clearly know it's mass printed but they just spread it out they've got so many poems inside and uh, and opening that the first thing i do is read the poem right? it's a it's an amazing thing you need to have a poem you could have a saying but have something inspirational um, on that note you know i ordered a, a credit card uh, uh, you know the uh, it's a consumer product from uh, slice and what they put in besides that was they had stickers, right? And uh, yeah, this is the coolest thing you could do with your product, right? Have stickers uh, made out there, which you can, and the sticker doesn't have to speak about the brand necessarily, but can speak about the attitude of the brand, right? Got it. Uh, which comes out. Now imagine in the unboxing thing, you might have a very simple product, but yeah, the person goes through and sees what is this? Oh, starts reading that and says, oh, these are stickers. Awesome, right? Uh, or may leave it on the side and use it some other time, right? But uh, uh, a commodity becoming an unboxing experience is a, so this is a credit card product, but look at what happens when I pull it out, right? It did something okay. like that, right? Nice. And uh, he, uh, of course, I found it, hey, uh, man, where's my card, right? Uh, in the initial piece. But when I when I really looked at this, I started playing around with it again and again. I Got it. Actually made a video of this and sent it out to a friend who's uh, you know starting up a credit card business in UK in London and uh, uh, from my business school. And I said, hey, this is what guys are doing out here. Got it. So uh, <coughs> sorry. So uh, like we've discussed how brand and packaging go hand in hand. So for up and coming uh, D2C brands, right? Small businesses, D2C brands. So what would you like, what would your input be on why they should invest in packaging overall and what does it bring in terms of value? Yeah, um, I think simply uh, there's no, uh, yeah, there's no uh, why uh, you have to, right? Because yes. uh, we entered an age of uh, brands and brands are built of experiences. D2C, all the more important because you cannot give the service experience right up front, right? Like a retail store can give you a service experience right up front, right? Uh, where you walk in and the way you're greeted, treated, the way it's laid out before you make the purchase is uh, establishes the experience. For D2C brands, you don't have that first journey. It's sometimes in your hand or sometimes not even in your hands. Because if, it's, if you're a reseller on another... Uh, uh, if you're a baker who sells primarily through Swiggy, 
you know, a small restaurant who sells primarily through Zomato, or if you're a, a reseller through Amazon, you don't have that experience in your hand, not too much of it. It's same for everyone else. So it's critical to have packaging as part of your brand experience, right? Got uh, it. Because uh, it, it is it contributes to your final brand, which contributes to your margin, and it also contributes to your repeatability, which contributes to your cost of acquiring the customer again, right? Uh, and uh, instills that. So there have been instances uh, where I have bought something, uh, I've not liked it, but everything was good about the packaging. And it wasn't that the product was shit, but I decided to order it once more because things look, and this has happened with me a lot in pizza, right? Where yes. Packaging looks good. Everything's good. Pizza's okay. If a pizza is shit, there's no way I'm ordering it again, right? Or whatever the packaging, whatever the unboxing experience, right? So the core is the product. But if you've got an above average product and it does not meet your customer's expectation, uh, having a good experience overall uh, does allow the customer to think, yeah, maybe it didn't meet me, but next time I'm having some friends over, I'll, I'll order this product again, right? At least it's it's nice and maybe it's just not my specific taste. And uh, yeah, it, so I remember a bunch of, uh, pizza brands on my Swiggy app, which I use, which uh, I say, yeah, I don't think there was great, but uh, let me try another flavor, right? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, there's this uh, company in uh, Bangalore called Ludo's Pizza. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, we, we ordered like at midnight around 1230 from there yeah. and the pizza was okay. But they actually with the pizza, they sent us a Ludo board in the form of a small paper. Uh -huh. And they sent us like a small die and like the pieces. And we actually played Ludo as well. Uh -huh. And as you said, right, that entire experience that was created around it, I might not remember the taste of the pizza, but yeah. that yeah. whole situation was really memorable. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. See, but I think uh, these brand experiences, uh, brand is made of experiences, and that's very important to remember, right? So how can you, uh, so you have to identify all the touch points and do that. I remember when I used Insta Mojo the first point, first time, right? Uh, we went to the, uh, went to the website and this was years ago, right? This was not even your current website. I went to the website, clicked a few buttons and I already had set up payments, right? Uh, so the experience for me, I couldn't care how, uh, how it looked, what, how good it looked. It was for me, the experience was super fast, right? As compared to dealing with some other gateways for, you know, months, literally sometimes, right? And uh, trying to get that start started. And uh, yeah. so whenever I repeated that to other uh, friends that, uh, hey, I set up this Instamojo account and I can get money right away. Uh, everything was, okay, yeah, I said, uh, it was Muska, man. It was quick, like Makkhan, right? Very easy to set up. And that is a brand experience that I go away with. Uh, so you want to, yeah, yeah, and yeah, tomorrow if somebody even told me, hey, I am not able to set this up, I would say, dude, just try it again, right? Uh, because it was pretty quick for me. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't, and you know, I wouldn't necessarily bother too much about somebody else's brand. But as a consumer, I said, no, 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 there's something wrong. You must be doing something wrong. Right? Yeah. Uh, that was, so it related to the point that you mentioned. Yeah. So uh, I think Manish, that uh, brings us to the end of the questions we had for today. Uh, yeah. Are there any closing comments that you would like to make about businesses, packaging, branding, and things they should look out for? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take any last question. If then none, then I would say one thing that you know, all of us as entrepreneurs, uh, building, uh, yeah, building our new businesses. You know, we we have lots of desires, right? Uh, what's uh, what's great, my brand should look like this, my packaging should look like this. Uh, the fact is that uh, we need to understand what's most important for the customer first. Maybe the customer doesn't care for your packaging. Right? Uh, so that doesn't mean you do poor packaging, but deprioritize it. Don't get obsessive about it. Right? Uh, figure out in the brand experience, what are the most important things? For example, Printo figured out while we were doing this, and it comes by trial and error. Right? It comes. Uh, uh, we made a lot of mistakes. We finally figured out the customer cares for uh, speed. I thought the customer cared for quality. They came to Printo. Number one thing, quality. 
when I asked them, they realized they came for speed. They came for convenience. Number three was quality, right? And uh, yeah, I said, wow, are these the three things? And we started focusing on that. Uh, let's okay. get customers to focus on that. And, uh, yeah, and packaging became a secondary thing for me. But it was an important, it's a hygiene factor, right? But how much do you want to invest in that hygiene factor in terms of you know, emotional energy, in terms of money? Uh, all depends where it fits into this. If I delivered awesome packaging uh, without addressing speed or without addressing quality, it just wouldn't help. Right? So, uh, so uh, we, while I'm going to talk about packaging and saying, hey, come to Printo to do even the smallest unit, even if you have one label, we can do that for you. And that's the new, you know, uh, new change in technology. But I would also emphasize uh, yeah, yeah, that, hey, think about whether you really need packaging, whether you need 10 layers of it, or you just need a simple layer of it. Keep it simple. Let's focus on customer first. Uh, brand experience uh, focused on the customer is more important than brand experience focused on packaging. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Manish. That was uh, really insightful. For uh, those of you who are tuning us, uh, tuning with us right now, please register for the webinar to get some resources from Instamojo and Printo, which will help you focus a lot more on packaging and branding. And uh, you can share this with other businesses who might take help out of this. Uh, again, thank you, Manish, for such an insightful conversation. I had a lot of fun, learned so much about branding and packaging today. And uh, for uh, <coughs> some of you, if you notice, there are some comments which uh, talk about Printo's products. And uh, there's also a discount code that you will get in your email. Uh, please do go through Printo's website and make sure you check them out. The product is amazing and you can actually get a lot of your packaging needs served by Printo itself. To check out their website, we'll put the uh, links in the comments and description. And uh, thank you everyone for joining with us today. And it was uh, lovely talking to everyone. All the best for your business. And Thanks, Keval. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.